I guess I uh, tore apart the whole playfield. I'm Mike Dimas, and this is Pinball Shenanigans. All right, TX Sector has left the building. Thank you and super duper shout out to Sean Russell for helping me get that beast out of the basement and delivered space over to Rob Noel where he will pack it up and get it ready for the shipping company, which I haven't heard from yet. Supposed to hear this week. It's Tuesday. So this is the aftermath of the games room here. I got a little bit of crap everywhere. Eh, it's not too bad though, really. Um, so I'm going to tidy this up. Probably throw Harlem in TX's spot right now. And that'll be a good spot to kind of, for it to hang out for a little bit. Oh, you know what? I got a couple things here that I gotta bring down. Let's see what I got. Okay, so. I did pop over to Kevin Grazley today. Grazley's. And I started to do a bit of an update video over there, but time ran short. I had to get back here for Sean. So I did grab from our Marco order. The part that I need, whoa, that is zoomed. I, I do that every time. Well, you th figured I'd learn. I always zoom in too much at first. That is the part I need for Harlem Drop Target Bank. My arm is broken. And this is $4.99 at Marco, so that was pretty sweet. Um, Sean brought me this. We basically traded. I traded uh, my a working shopped up um, System 1 driver board for Sean's Joker Poker, for this um, Nywumpf 2007, I don't know what version this is, I don't think it's a, Nywumpf was probably just established in 2007, but uh, don't know what version number this board is. Anyway, there's a bad transistor on here, I forgot which one it is, it's the out hole for Joker Poker, so I can find out on the manual, and I don't know... I'm, maybe I can replace it myself because I think the, yeah I think there was an LED that was on I think these little guys are just surface mount LEDs that indicate or are they components because these are these lights and these are solenoids is that what this is all about anyway Sean brought me this I'll fix it up and he's got himself a working original System 1 uh, board in there now. So, that's where that came from. This came from Kevin's. I'm going to go back there tomorrow and we'll probably do a little update, wrap up that video. Actually, kind of just get started. He had a box full of Marco parts that I was going to start to go through, but uh, uh, yeah, I had to get back here um, for Sean. So, what I think I'm going to do is LED South Park. So I'm going to be seeing Davis still tomorrow and then I can replenish my LED stash once I know what I need. Uh, probably we'll also stick in that drop target part here, remove my little temporary rig, put all this other crap away and yeah so I guess this is probably mostly going to be a South Park update so that's what I think I'll focus on is just kind of work on South Park and um, yeah I mean I typically like to save doing LEDs for a little later in the process but that's okay I'm making an exception because I'm seeing uh, Mr. LED Davis Steele tomorrow so I better get started stop tagging and start shagging Okay, just a little quick update. Um, I wasn't really able to find a plastic set for this. They don't make them. So, I've got this broken plastic here, this broken plastic here, and then one other broken plastic here. 
Okay, that's the update. This target I'm getting new, new drop target decals and the topper. Those are the main things that I think I'm missing so far. But I, thanks to multiple different sources, have been able to find what I need. So source number one, shout out to late night 04 on pin side. Oh, let's turn that off, okay. He, let's see if I can enlarge this, makes a reproduction plastic for the big loop around the, the uh, Kenny guy and this little guy on the right, which is sweet. It also comes with this like stabilizer to go under here so that uh, Kenny doesn't smash his head and break the plastic and this extra little post here and this is something to do with the opto um, optos on either side kind of protectors for that and then a little um, Mr. Hanky hand in case yours is broken off so that was helpful awesome thank you late night okay also what do we got here Paul Palisse Palliser um, he oh yeah he didn't really have plastics that I was necessarily looking for but look what he did have a whole whack of promo plastics probably the whole set so shout out to him thank you he's selling me that lot uh, yeah so that's like the whole friggin family there uh, okay and then shout out to Nathan Purdom who these are like I put a wanted ad uh, on pinball enthusiasts that's how I got to this response and he had a crap load of plastics but I really just needed this one here with the tip broken off there. Um, I kind of forgot he had all this. I think it's a mix of used and new. But he is selling me that piece and a couple slingshots, extra slingshot plastics. So between all of that, my Marco order and my Action Pinball order, which has the decals, and hundreds of dollars. I think I have pretty much everything I need to complete the restoration of South Park. So, shout out to all those fellers. And uh, I think it's time to get to work. Let's uh, take a look. Again, I'll zoom out here. Oh, is it going to want balls before it goes into a track mode? Do I have balls in there? Oh, there we go. Okay. So here is a look at a tracked mode with all incandescent bulbs. All right, take a look at that. Mr. Hanky, these characters. This extra ball, that's actually illuminating, believe it or not. There it is. So these green lights, are these guys, these green lights, just remember all those, because I, and this like skill shot there, just, I think that's pink. We're going to change all these bulbs now. Oh, and then the top side LEDs. We got two green toilet bulbs, and then two ramp bulbs. Um, I think that's it for top side. Okay, so... Time to get to work. All right, just been LEDing for maybe the last hour or so. And Jay the neighbor popped by to say hi and offered his services tomorrow if needed, as he is off work tomorrow. So uh, it's pretty sweet if I need him for anything. Move Ghostbusters into the lineup or something, then uh, I know where to find him. So we'll see what happens. I don't know yet what my plan is for that, but. Okay, you just saw what the LEDs, no, you just saw what the incandescent bulbs looked like. So let's do a little tour of all the inserts LED now. Obviously, I still have to do incandescent bulbs. They're definitely a lot of more visible toilet bulbs. Extra ball. 
Spooky vision. I guess that's the wizard mode. Come around here. Get the ramp lights. Those look good. All the people. Way more lit up now. These look good. Green looks good. Uh, this, is, I think, is a pink insert, but I don't think I have pink, so I went and made it purple for the skill shot. Yeah, I think I got everything. Special in the outlines. Like, incandescent, you would barely see that. So, I think all in all, let's take an overview. Overhead view. Pretty cool light show. Actually. It's pretty wild. So, yeah, there's a little bit of, at uh, some points in the light show, you can see where it's calling for, like, I think the bulb to maybe kind of illuminate a little bit and then dim, and it has a little bit of flickery effect there on some of them. Since this is similar to, like, uh, maybe, like, White Star... You know, Lord of the Rings that want, you know, could use the LED OCD board. So, you know, maybe if you really wanted to smooth out the transition of on and off and dimming and fading, you might go LED OCD board. Because um, you can kind of just see how, I wouldn't say flickers, but I think it's just kind of the effect of it trying to maybe illuminate and dim. I don't know if there's an LED OCD board for South Park, but... I don't really need one, so I am not going to be looking for one. I never did buy one for my Lord of the Rings. I can completely tolerate it. I am not that OCD that I felt the need to buy a $500 board to smooth out some lighting transitions. So, I think my LED job is complete. Hey, wait, does that guy light up? No. Because he's under the subway, around where the subway is. Okay. So. What do I need? Probably going to need some more. Warm 44s. Some more natural 555s. The rest of the stash is pretty good. And I always got backup bulbs for, you know, if I get desperate, just miscellaneous other kinds. I typically stick to this style, frosted, but... I will use these. I did use one bendy uh, in one of the inserts. I've got all kind of bendy bulbs and some flashers, some regular bulbs. But yeah, so where needed, I shall apply fun extra stuff. Oh, there is a piece of glass right here. Mm, that would be not fun to search around and stick my finger into that. Okay, so I think that maybe, what do I want to do? I think I want to try and sort out some switch issues and maybe rebuild the flippers. Or do I want to tear this thing completely apart? That is the question. Well, you'll find out pretty shortly. That's the other thing. I knew I was forgetting something underneath. Look what I got. All tech systems from Charlottesville, Virginia. Now, this should be my capacitor that I need to repair the old all tech board that was in Harlem Globetrotters when I started the restoration of it. Oh, it's glued in there. Or taped in there. Come on. Oh, isn't that fun looking capacitor? It's in there good. David Altec, you did a good job packing this. There we go. Wow. Okay, interesting. C23. Oh, okay. And I know where it goes. So that will be, uh, I'll put these two. These are the pretty much the final pieces of the Harlem puzzle. Put those there for now. Save those for a rainy day. We'll focus on South Park. I almost called it Star Trek because that was the game that was here before. But uh, okay, I'm gonna formulate my 
my plan and I'll be back. Okay, I just uh, had some dinner, now I'm back at it. Uh, previously I had removed a bunch of this electrical tape that I found throughout the wiring underside here. And they came from places like this. Which looks like there's no solder there. And another spot here. No solder. Another, wait, no. There's at least a couple more. Where are they? But I also just discovered this here. That connector. For that opto that's a little hacky as well and isn't there something else going on over here too uh oh yeah there's like a little nick in that wire and then nick somewhere else is that the other one yeah look at that i don't know if those, those I think I was in switch test wiggling them around. Oh yeah, here's something else. Look at this. So, I think it's all pertaining to these smart switches. Or what, they're not smart switches. Just those connectors. Um, I think somebody was having issues with the switches registering and kind of like move the wire from the IDC connector down a little further down the chain and then uh, where are the other ones here yeah there's like three wires in this bundle here anyway every switch does work but this I need to tidy up I need to sort this out and also pretty sure this switch here being intermittent is what was causing my out hole or um shooter lane switch to be intermittent this guy here so yeah i need to i need to deal with that i'm also thinking of removing this subway and also removing this giant kenny mech uh there's the toilet mech hmm. just not sure in what order do i want to do everything not sure yet. That subway. There's three switches on it. Alright, up there. And I think they're all just... Um, they have little connectors. So there's just uh, 40 screws and three connectors and then finagle it out of there. It shouldn't be that bad, really. I mean, it'll be a little bit of a pain, but I think I can pull that off. Maybe if I have that all removed, then I can focus on the switch wiring, kind of untangle this mess, you know, kind of remove some of the equation of, remove some crap, and then narrow it down to the, oh, here's some more electrical tape. This is the stuff that I was finding all over the place. So I removed it. That one doesn't seem to have uncovered anything bad in that section, but why was that even there? Uh, but yeah, so there's at least like one, two, three, four, five, six different spots with electrical tape. I'm sure I'll find more stuff, but yeah, maybe I think I'm gonna remove the subway. All right, wish me luck. All right, so for those of you who thought I was kidding when I said about 40 screws, well, I wasn't that far off. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, no, 28, 28 screws to remove <laughs> the subway. Uh, and then uh, an extra couple screws because I actually had to remove this opto housing. And... Uh, yeah, so this is, sorry, this is what it looks like. This is what registers your hits on Kenny. And I've noticed already that 
that opto has been changed at one point. Um, hmm. If I ever need to replace an opto, would I be able to remove that with the subway on or not? I didn't really pay that much attention. The subway kind of splits around there, no. So I think I might be able to remove it. Yeah, 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 should be able to. But you can see what it looked like before, so it certainly needed a cleaning. Um, yeah, so I was tugging on lots of wires and stuff while I was doing that. I was definitely potentially breaking stuff. Um, but yeah, here is, this is a good way I can address this connector now. What a mess that is. So I think I'm going to change that over to uh, Molex style. Make sure I have enough wiggle room there. Yeah, I shouldn't have to add any wire, but I don't know. We'll see. So there's that. Oh, you know what I wanted to do? Just, I did have this disconnected, but then I reconnected it because I want to see just how well it's working. So let's turn on the machine. Ah, oh, see, one side's lit up. That's normal. I'm gonna throw it in switch test. And portals. Okay, there we go. Switches are now in test here. We'll do a test here. Here. Can you hear the bong? Okay. Let's see how well this guy works. Okay. I'm gonna have to try that same test. It's registering fine with two hands and kind of wiggle this connector and the wires around just to see how how happy that opto is. Hey, what's this red one for? Hmm. What does that say? CR2. What is that for? Because that hangs out the bottom of the play field. Interesting. Anyway, at least that works. Okay, so yeah, I was going to show you the subway. I got to give kudos to Sega because this is a nice thick subway ramp and it is well made. I don't see any damage to it whatsoever. You know, sometimes tabs could be broken off, ends of ends could be smashed. Even that, is that a tiny little chip or is that just normal? I don't think that's normal. So, yeah, look at that. That's a high traffic area there, perfectly intact. So, good job, Sega. Very cool looking subway ramp. I like that it's blue too. Why did you go blue? You didn't have to go blue. It's an interesting choice. And yeah, so I am going to, um, yeah, I guess mess with all these switch wires now and see if I can clean them up. Who knows? Maybe I'll remove Kenny while I'm down here too because. He's intrigued, that mech intrigues me. I want to bust him out and kind of examine how he works. I mean, it looks fairly simple overall. Three solenoids, three different motions. But um, yeah, might pull that guy out of there too while I'm, while I'm at it. All right, I moved four screws from the Kenny mech and it ain't coming loose. So I noticed that there's a couple bolts on the top side of the play field or nuts couple bolts running through and I think they are located somewhere around here so in order for me to remove Kenny I have to remove pretty much everything off the play field I wasn't really planning on doing that but well shit got to start sometime and somewhere I think it's time to start taking a crap load of photos there is oof a lot of posts oh my god i really hope they're all the same height if they're all different sizes yikes this i have to be very very careful about 
but eh, pretty much two ramps and uh, one wire form and that'll get me down pretty pretty down to the wood so all right I guess it's time to strip the play field okay so if you ever need to um, service Kenny by removing them from the play field all you got to do is remove all that hardware this ramp cut a bunch of wire ties zip ties underneath the play field to remove these three wire harnesses remove these five screws in this plastic remove these one two three four five posts these screws and then uh, good luck trying to remove these nuts because they're stuck like so and you cannot access getting a wrench under there so it all came out in one piece obviously I can uh, disassemble that now but once you have all of this stuff removed then you can access the two nuts that hold Kenny into place from the top side of the play field so I think I'm gonna remove him now um, also oh wait maybe it's three nuts actually that would make sense and then uh, yeah once I strip this bad boy down, I can uh, finish off the LEDs for the GI. I gotta factor that in when placing my order with Dave. So at least probably just call it 50 44 style. I'll be going with probably natural white. Yeah. Okay. So that's where I'm at so far. Uh, making progress though. All right. So. I removed the three screws and found it the hard way. I guess um, it was fairly obvious that Kenny doesn't fit through going down that way. So I thought, oh, I'll just remove this whole mech going up. I'm like, wait, that ain't gonna work. That's way too wide. So I've been studying this for an eon. And you know what? I bet you the instructions probably tell me precisely how to do this. But I'm starting to think that maybe this L shape, maybe I can kind of tuck that into the hole and then work my way out. We're gonna try this. If this doesn't work, I'll, uh, maybe I'll actually read the instructions because this is a bit of a friggin' 3D puzzle here. I don't know. It's definitely, if you don't have patience and you got somewhere to be in an hour, this would drive you crazy, but pinball, has kind of trained a little bit of that out of me. I don't I don't have as much frustration as I used to. I used to get, I used to like start sweating at a time like this, like in frustration, but all right, I think uh, let me try this one more time. So I just gotta remove the last nut. I don't know, this is probably not gonna work. There's a lot of friggin' zip ties. A lot of friggin' connectors. Okay. Let's see if this theory works. Gotta get those. Oh, come on, baby. Are you gonna work? It's kind of close. Kind of close. No. No, no, no. Okay. You know what I really should have done? Because I thought this would be fun to try. Yay, we fun. What the hell? Did that? Something just fell from somewhere. No, that looks like a spring I cut from before. Anyway, what one should do before they tear apart this type of machine is go to the South Park thread and read it. You learn so much. And I've done that on different machines. Um, I've learned zero right now, just how to be a dum dum. So I'll figure this out. I'll be back. Well, I looked on Pinside briefly in the club there and scrolled around, searched for Kenny. I do like people using like all four characters. That's pretty cool for a topper instead of just one. Um, yeah, I looked at the, uh, photo gallery, which was here. I didn't feel like reading all 23 pages, so I tried the manual. Just pulled up 
the Kenny view. Uh, that's front view. I didn't really look at the side view, actually. But, I don't know. I just figured if I remove this C-clip and this C-clip, which is here, one here, and one here. Well, I figure if I remove one, I can pull out this pin, and then I need to remove uh, one other C-clip here, because that holds, that's like, I got a long plunger there that holds Kenny as well. So, I don't know how I'm going to put them back together again, but I did manage to pop off those two C-clips. And look, I got them out. Oh, and also, I did remove the screw that was here that holds... Oh... No, I was just thinking maybe there's a nut on the other side, but no, that's just the uh, the socket for the light that goes in there. But how is he secured? Oh, there's a little metal plate in there. But the problem is, to remove those three nuts to remove Kenny, that's not accessible. You can't get under there because it's, it's like uh, there's just too much crap in the way. So I got him off. Here's that pin that I removed. Uh... Somehow I didn't lose either clip as I plucked them off with my screwdriver. I'm kind of dreading putting them back together again, but there it is. We are free and clear, so I can finally, actually, literally I'm free and clear. Boom, there it is. So I definitely don't think I did that the most efficient way, but he's removed, so we can kind of check him out and uh see if we can tune him up because he ain't moving left and right so well moving up and down okay this connector is fine um but yeah so that's all you have to do to uh, access kenny is fight around for a solid hour remove a whole bunch of crap and uh there you have it so we'll see what's next all right well i guess i uh Tore apart the whole playfield, pretty much. What does this say? Comedy Club Central, all rights reserved, South Park, August 1998, yet another J and J design. Look how clean it is under the apron. I was kind of surprised about that. I mean, this machine was played a bunch for sure, but hmm, well, I would have expected to be a little more filthy. Anyway, this is where I'm at. No more wire forms, no more ramps, no more plastics, no more light bulbs. All the incandescents have been removed. And that's what the back looks like. I still gotta really clean this cabinet too. I mean, still a lot of work ahead of me. I mean, I'm just getting started, but I feel like I'm actually uh, putting in a good dent in this toilet. Looks like it might have been leaking. Pretty dirty down there, but all in all. Oh, I forgot to remove the bulbs from the pop bumpers. I think I might replace this skirt. It's chipped. I don't love doing pop bumper rebuilds, but I don't know. Once you get so deep into something, it's like why leave something like that behind you kind of want to just do it all but then if i do one then i might want to do all three and then it's just never ending but it is half the fun so here is everything i removed i did find two more broken plastics unfortunately this corner one's cracked i can probably just fix that one it's not that bad but this other one here why did I jump the gun and order my plastics from those guys before I tore the playfield apart? You couldn't tell that that one was broken, really, unless you had a really good eye, because it was like so on the playfield. So, at least it's all there. I may inquire, see if uh, that plastic's available. The back corner one, I'm not too concerned about. But it would be nice if I could get that one I bet you one of the guys had that and could have shipped that along with the ones I just ordered so that'll cost me extra but I'm gonna look into that 
So there's a million pieces on this machine. Although I've taken apart uh, machines that have been more intricate than that. And then we got this. I ran out of space on my table over there. Aprons off. Just a little Kenny Opto action. My 28 screws for the subway. So all the bulbs. There's all the incandescent bulbs from the machine. So, oh, I was just gonna say, I wonder how my weldman is. Oh, you know what? I'm going to see Kevin tomorrow. And I think I'll ask him if I can bring this because these are often broken. And uh, I'm glad I noticed that because it'll be perfect timing. Um, yeah, so that's some good progress. What am I gonna do next? I got a little bit more time before I think I'm gonna wrap up. I mean, logistically, logically, cleaning the play field is probably the next step. Although I kind of done the main area just when everything was put together, so I got a head start on that, so that's not that bad. Vacuum up this cabinet. Um, wouldn't mind working on Kenny. Would like to see what he's all about. I did find in the uh, pin side thread though that apparently there's a couple springs that look like they kind of rest under his arms. Maybe to help him bounce back. Make him a little more animated. So I'm going to have to look into that because see that's what I mean about the those pin side threads. If you join the like the club, like South Park Members Club, whatever. Everybody's posting about their machine. You can learn a lot about a specific machine if you join the pin side club or just read it. I didn't, I don't think I, you don't technically do anything to join. You just post in there. Hey, I'm a member of the club now. I got a South Park. Um, but if I need some help, then I will post in there. Otherwise, it just lurk for now. Hmm. Kind of does want to be. Completely re rebuilt in the pop bumper cap department, but maybe I can just clean those up. Okay. Well, that is definitely a, a good start, so we'll see what happens next. I'll probably remove all the rubbers. Yeah. All right. I must be 90% done cleaning the play field. Like I said, I had a head start when I clean kind of the accessible areas when I first busted this out. And now I did all the um, stuff underneath the plastics and ramps and everything. Back corner was very crusty. And much better now. I tightened every single black post. With the Phillips and the quarter inch nut driver, so pan out here. How does it look like this? So I put a pretty good dent in this machine tonight. So what I will probably end up doing most likely tomorrow, I did clean the back panel, is um, kind of do a final, final cleaning of the play field. I left in, on all the post rubbers because it's easier for me to kind of just swap them one for one, those guys, so I don't screw anything up. Because um, there's so many posts, and it's easier to just leave them on and then swap them out one at a time. But in terms of big rubbers, those are pretty easy. There's only like, you know, six of them, so that you can't really screw up. I took lots of photos, of course, so clean up the switches. I'm excited to replace every single one of these black post rubbers with some fun cliffy colors. There's a lot of them. I mean, I will replace all the ones that are visible. So you got four, five, six, seven, eight. Ah, that one's not really visible, but I'll probably do that anyway. Nine, 10, 11, uh, 12. Yeah, so. Add a little bit of spritz of color on there, of course, flipper rubbers. The bats are filthy. I can probably clean them up, but they're not cracked. That's where they'll crack, is right at the tip there. 
So they're structurally okay, and they do have the South Park decals on them. So I may reuse the bats, rebuild the, the mechs. Oh, I do have the trough removed. I haven't cleaned out in there yet. <laughs> um, so we'll bring that to Kevin tomorrow. But I think, yeah, a little bit of cleaning, populating all the bulbs. Ooh, I gotta deal with the pop bumpers. And then re-rubbering this thing. I could easily accomplish that tomorrow. And then maybe even get into uh, old Kenny. So I'm gonna wrap this up for the night. But uh yeah. Cool cool play field, cool toys. Lots of fun stuff to play with. But I'm done playing for the night, so we'll uh, see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.